bring them on for supplemental ed. We can monitor relative humidity. We can monitor under floor pressure. We don't utilize those as part of our calculations, but we do have clients that have asked for the ability to get that information. You can set your rack temperatures. You give us your top and bottom temperatures. We'll tell you uh, as set points. We'll then display for you what the actual temperatures are. If it goes above or below those set points, we'll notify in either red or blue. This was a client who had a requirement of 77 degrees as the maximum for any rack in their facility. When we walked in, 36% of the racks were over 77 degrees. We were able to bring them all down under that and reduce their cost by 38%. Here's an example of the energy consumption. We had a uh, the Gold Star facility was operating at uh, 48 kilowatts of power consumption for cooling. When our system was turned on, they dropped down to 18. At one point, somebody panicked because they saw something go red and they hit an override button on our system, and they went up to 32. And they called us and said, "No, that's not a problem." And they put the system back on, and we dropped back down to the 18 level. situation here where customer had 12 to 14 cracks running, two were in a lead lag situation. When we were done, there were only five cracks running, and we were able to drop their temperatures, as you can see. Is designed to scale. Realistically, we can manage any size data center. We've done them as small as 600 square feet. Um, our ROI gets at about 15 to 20,000 square feet uh, and above. Our ROI is about two years. In the city of New York, they're willing to rebate 12 and a half cents per kilowatt hour up to 50% of the cost of our system. So typically wind up with about a one year ROI, um, making it free. Uh, no additional budget money is needed. Um, again, everything is, can grow. So as your center expands, moves into other areas, you go into another floor, we can accommodate that all through a single system just by adding ne uh, additional network gateways. Uh, everything is uh, set up to be redundant. We will archive information. All of the information is uh, stored redundantly on our server. Um, and everything is topology independent. I don't care if you have raised floor, no raised floor, partial raised floor. We're going to look at each room based on shared plenum as its own. If you have three rooms that all share plenum, we're going to look at it as one room. Uh, we use uh, standards for backup and so forth. We can store about five years worth of data on our server, depending on the size of your installation. That can be then archived elsewhere if you want. Uh, this is history insensitive. Although we do look at historical behaviors, this is not, we don't set everything in stone, it's all adaptive. So as those new servers come in and come out, somebody took out blanking panels or didn't put them back in, we, we will change what's going on. So if at two in the morning, a row that's been idle all day suddenly starts working because they're doing backups at 2 in the morning, we're going to adapt to the additional load there. We have 100% fail-safe protection. We operate off a heartbeat system. We lose heartbeat with any portion of the system. That portion of the system, everything comes on. So the worst case, you wind up where you are today with all your cracks running until we get a repair done. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything is uh, highly secure sits behind your firewall, we're using Linux. Uh, all of our sensors, as I mentioned, are, are highly secure, so there's no way anybody's getting into our network. And in every installation that we have done, and we've got o almost 200 of them now, we have not had a customer who was not able to save money or gain significant management over what they have. So in some cases, if you're undercooled in your facility, which uh, I know of several, I've been to several data centers that are actually undercooled. They're struggling to meet temperatures at the rack. We may not be able to save you money, but we'll be able to get you to a point where you can manage your temperatures adequately. Any questions? Yes? Uh, a couple. Um, for your mesh on your matrix, what's the overlap between sensors? You have one in every three. We have, we, have one, uh, we have one of these units, which uses dust networks technologies, uh, one every three racks. 
and that's just going to measure the one we're after. We could do more than that, but we found that it's overkill. The efficiency versus the cost to the client isn't worth it. So we've determined that as long as we're at the ends of the rack and about every third, we are right on the money. Adding additional sensors just didn't make sense. Okay, thanks, Chef. Got two more. Yep. Um, the history and sensitive thing. Do you aim to establish like a sequencing algorithm with the data as you're collecting it? Do you aim to kind of find the, the best balance? Okay, yes. then do you lock that in? We utilize that, but we update it on a rate. We, up, we, we have our own algorithms, but we update what we're going to have on at any given time based on the real-time input. Because we're getting data every minute, so we're going to make adjustments as we need to. And when you, when you establish um, the field of influence, are you operating at full capacity on all cracks and then sequence one off, one on? Well, what we will do when we first do our initial commission, we turn them all on, turn one off at a time. So we'll turn one off, turn that for 15 minutes, take measurements, turn it back on. Now once we've completed that cycle through the facility, we're now going to do a series of calculations and say, okay, I want to turn off number 11. It will wait 15 minutes. It will then turn off number 16 and wait 15 minutes. It will never do more than four in an hour. So it takes a little bit of time to get to that point, but we want to ensure that our calculations are right by watching the temperatures as we go through that so that we don't cause any problems or panic. Okay, gotcha. And then one last thing. Um, for the whole Con Ed NYSERDA topic, mm -hmm. have you done many engagements? Um, uh, I have not done any of them. Okay. okay. Um, I joined the company in May. I handle this region. Uh, this will be, we have done installs in the area for Verizon, but not gotten involved in the program. Okay. okay. Um, it is our intent, because the ROI was so good for them that it was a negligible amount of money. Mm -hmm. uh, when you buy 100 systems, we discount. Um, but we ha I have spoken to the folks at uh, NYSERDA, at Lockheed, at Con Ed, including their engineers, and we have gotten approval. Okay. We are an official partner enlisted on their site. Oh, great. Thanks, man. Yep. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I do. Um, so you understand what the value that the system brings, mm -hmm. how that the system connects to the rest of the infrastructure in place. Okay. Usually, as I said, we have a DMS already in place, right. kind of rotating the crack units. Right. So, if I understood correctly, the system will monitor the temperature in the aisles. Yes. Right? But then it's going to kind of take control yes. over the DMS. Correct. And then, big and will really actually make the decisions of yes. what's running and what's not running. Right. So, what will happen is you have a BMS system in place. Let's say you have LifeSite or some other, or even ALC, Schneider. Uh, what will happen is if, they, if they're currently controlling your crack on and off, and they can provide us with temperatures, supply and return, and power consumption, because we do take into account the energy efficiency of each crack. So if I can cho have to choose between two, I'm going to pick the one that's most energy efficient. What we will do is send a supervisory command using BACnet to the BMS, telling it to turn off a unit or to turn on a unit. So we will utilize that functionality. If you already have a system that's taking rack temperatures, we will get the information through BACnet or some other means so that we can pull that data and don't have to install these. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. So basically, BMS will tell the BMS what to do with the racks. Yes. Because the BMS doesn't have the intelligence in it to determine which crack. Just because a crack is sitting here doesn't mean this is going to get cold. In fact, we've seen situations where this gets warmer and it gets colder where you are. So we're going to learn that where a BMS just knows to turn something on or off. There's no intelligence behind it. So we make decisions based on the behaviors of the data center and the behaviors of the cracks, which also takes into account airflow. Simple Yep. How much each of those sensors? Are they temperature humidity? Just temperature? This unit with uh, two temperature probes on is about $250. You add a humidity sensor, it's $100, $150. It's not much. It plugs right into the same unit. 
uh, that we can have three. So I can do two temperature and humidity. I can do two temperature and an underfloor pressure. I can do them independent. We'll work with you to figure that out. They're not very expensive. I'd rather not sell them. I like people who already have sensors in place because we're a software company. Okay. We manufacture these because we have to. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. In, you talked about smaller data centers. I think you said the smallest you, you did was 8,600 square feet yes. or something. When you get into smaller data centers of a couple of thousand square feet, you don't have a lot of crap units in there. No, you don't. So, so how does it work in there? Are you still able to achieve the types of uh, savings? And, and Our ROI goes up significantly okay. because your base, base cost for software is the elephant. Once you've got the elephant putting the saddle on it, it isn't hard. Right. Now, our average system is about $250,000. Right. But it's talking about 10,000 to 200,000 square foot data centers. Aside, um, aside from the cost. Right. Okay, I'm talking more about the control here. We, we can gain it if they have at least three cracks. At least three cracks, that's where I was going to okay. Anything below that, you got two, you're probably going to need the capacity. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have VFDs, our savings go up significantly. If you retrofit with EC plug fans, for example, our savings will go up significantly. Uh, because we'll control fan speed at that point. So if you were to take an old DX unit, and, and Liebert kind of says you shouldn't do it because if the fan speed goes below 35, um, you can have freezing. We make sure you don't go below 35. So you can actually do retrofits on some of the older equipment and gain the additional savings. Any other questions? As many as you want. It's okay. They said we don't have we don't have a BMS system. So okay. they, they said we got typical to no liver cracks around right. blowing air. You just mentioned that you guys specialize in the software and intelligence. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a work. Well we put these sensors in and, and then you've got everything you need. But how do you tell the crack to say? We we put this unit in. Right. Temperature sensor. So we're gonna take supply and return temperature, we're gonna take power from one of the legs on, on a three-phase system. We're going to measure power of the clamp on CT. Then we install a uh, relay that goes to the remote off that your fire suppression system uses. So we will hold the unit off when we want it off and release it when we want it on. If you have a VFD, we do the same thing, except we send an analog signal with zero to 100 to tell it at what speed to operate the fan. Any other questions? Okay, I'd like to thank you very much. Have a good evening.